Welcome to this edition of the 2019 National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN, Quick Learn series, which focuses on understanding and running the Standardized Antimicrobial Administration Ratio, or SAR. This Quick Learn is tailored to facilities reporting or interested in reporting data to the Antimicrobial Use, or AU, option in NHSN and group users with access to these data. Any NHSN user interested in learning about the SAR metric will benefit from this content. This is part one of a two-part series on the SAR. This presentation will address what a SAR is and why a SAR is useful. We will introduce updates to the SAR, including new drug categories and locations, and describe where to find a SAR report in NHSN. This presentation will also compare the 2017 baseline SAR to the original SAR metric, which was calculated using the 2014 baseline data. After this quick learn, the learner will be able to describe the components and the utility of the SAR metric, summarize the differences between the 2014 baseline and 2017 baseline SARs, and identify where to find SAR reports within the NHSN application. This Quick Learn will not cover how to run, interpret, or modify a SAR report. These concepts are covered in Part 2 of this two-part series. Part 2 can be found on the NHSN AUR homepage under Training Materials or at the link provided on this slide. This presentation will also not cover details of the SAR methodology. This information can be found in the AUR module protocol at the link provided on this slide. To help support your understanding of the SAR, a link to an in-depth statistical explanation of the SAR is also included on this slide. What is a SAR? The SAR is a standardized metric of antimicrobial use available to facilities reporting data into the NHSN AU option. The SAR is a ratio comparing observed or reported antimicrobial use to the antimicrobial use predicted by a referent or baseline population. Let's look at the ratio a little more closely. The observed number of antimicrobial days is how many days a facility actually administered antimicrobial agents to patients in a given location. The predicted antimicrobial days for that specific location are calculated using statistical models based on nationally aggregated data. These models take into account differences in hospital characteristics, such as hospital size. To interpret the SAR value, consider whether the SAR is less than, equal to, or greater than 1. A SAR below 1.0 indicates less antimicrobial use than predicted and may suggest underuse. A SAR the same as 1.0 indicates antimicrobial use is equal to the referent population's use. A SAR above 1.0 indicates more antimicrobial use than predicted and may suggest overuse. Note that a SAR is not a definitive measure of the appropriateness of antimicrobial use, and any SAR value may warrant additional investigation. SARs are a valuable metric for a variety of purposes. SARs can be used for public health disease surveillance, an organization's internal quality improvement efforts, and for benchmarking against external organizations to aid in quality improvement. SAR reports are not used for public reporting, payment programs, or regulatory and accreditation programs. A SAR can be used to prioritize and guide hospital or healthcare system stewardship efforts. For instance, the SAR can help determine where to focus resources in stewardship efforts, such as in a specific unit or with specific class of drugs. The SAR can also be used to assess progressive interventions with pre- and post-intervention data to understand how units of similar makeup may have different antimicrobial use within a facility or system, and to set stewardship goals. The SAR was first developed using aggregated 2014 AU data submitted to NHSN from 77 participating acute care hospitals. These data were used in statistical models to predict antimicrobial days. 
These SAR calculations cover six location groupings and five antibiotic categories. They do not include antifungal or anti-influenza agents. You can refer to the 2014 SAR document to review the drugs that are included in each SAR category. The six location groupings included in SARS calculated under the 2014 baseline are listed here on this slide. Please take a moment to pause your video and review the location groupings. Note that AU data for other location types were not included in the 2014 SARS, but can still be analyzed using other AU report options within the NHSN application. Since the 2014 baseline, a lot has changed. As more and more facilities have adopted the AU option, there is more diversity in the size and acuity of submitting hospitals, as well as the types of patient care locations. As of June 2019, over 1,300 hospitals participate in the AU option. Updating the baseline year using data submitted to NHSN in 2017 helps us to account for these changes. New prediction models allow us to increase the number of patient care locations modeled, to assess AU risk in more settings, and update the antimicrobial groupings. All of this leads to greater precision when predicting antimicrobial use. The calculations for SARS using the 2017 baseline cover 15 antimicrobial categories. These categories now include narrow-spectrum beta-lactam agents, antifungals, grouping categories specific to pediatric populations, and antibiotics posing the highest risk for Clostaroides difficile infections. In addition, we updated all SAR antibiotic categories, adding or removing drugs from the categories as needed. A complete list of the antimicrobial categories is available in the AUR module protocol. While the original 2014 baseline SARS were developed for six location groupings, 2017 baseline SARS include 13 separately modeled locations. Unlike the 2014 baseline SAR, the 2017 baseline SARS model adult and pediatric locations separately. These include the eight adult and five pediatric locations listed here. Among these location types, two, general hematology oncology and adult step-down units were added in the 2017 models. Please take a moment to pause your video and review the locations. Shown here is an overview of which variables were included in the 2014 and 2017 models. An X indicates that one or more SAR models in that baseline time period include that factor as a risk adjustment. In the 2017 baseline models, new factors were included as risk adjustment variables, including the percentage of ICU beds and average length of stay. A summary of the differences between 2014 baseline and 2017 baseline SARS are shown here. As you'll see, the referent group, or baseline population, differs. The 2017 baseline SAR has a greater number and type of antimicrobial categories as well as locations modeled than the original 2014 baseline SAR. For what years can SARS be calculated? 2014 baseline SAR reports are available for 2014 through 2018 data. 2017 baseline SAR reports are available for 2017 data moving forward. Please note, because of the differences in the SAR models, SARs calculated under the 2014 baseline cannot be directly compared with 2017 baseline SAR values. Now that we've reviewed some of the differences between the original 2014 baseline SAR and the 2017 baseline SAR, let's look at where to find the SAR reports in NHSN. Prior to running any NHSN analysis report, we need to generate new data sets. After logging into NHSN, navigate to Analysis on the left-hand navigation bar. Select Generate Datasets and click the Generate New button. It can take several minutes to generate datasets. 
After generating a new data set, navigate to Analysis on the left-hand navigation bar and select Reports. Select the Antimicrobial Use and Resistance Module drop-down option and navigate to the Antimicrobial Use Data folder to access 2017 baseline SAR reports. Notice that next to the available SAR reports in the Antimicrobial Use Data folder, the baseline year, 2017, is listed in the title. If you're interested in SAR reports calculated using the original 2014 baseline, navigate to Analysis on the left-hand navigation bar and select Reports. Select the Antimicrobial Use and Resistance Module folder and navigate to the Antimicrobial Use Data 2014 Baseline SARS folder to access 2014 Baseline SAR reports. You may wonder which baseline should be used to meet your individual AU needs. The first consideration when choosing a baseline is the time period of interest. As previously discussed, 2014 baseline reports are available for 2014 through 2018 data. 2017 baseline reports are available for 2017 data moving forward. In general, we recommend using the 2017 baseline SAR reports when available because of their increased precision, updated drug categories, and additional locations. However, the original 2014 baseline SAR reports may still be used. For example, if you were assessing change over time for data from January 2016 to December 2017, you would use the 2014 baseline SAR reports since 2016 data are not included in the 2017 baseline SAR reports. Please note that reports generated in the NHSN application will always have the referent population in the title. Now that you understand the SAR in greater detail, the next objective is to learn how to generate a SAR report within NHSN. For more information on how to run, interpret, and modify SAR reports within the NHSN application, listen to Part 2 of this Quick Learn series at the webpage provided. This slide provides some additional NHSN resources. On the NHSN Antimicrobial Use and Resistance Module webpage, you can access the AUR module protocol for detailed information on reporting, the SAR Quick Reference Guides, or QRGs, and other training webinars. Additionally, CDC has put together a document called Strategies to Assess Antibiotic Use to Drive Improvements in Hospitals, available at the webpage provided. This slide contains links to the resources referenced throughout this Quick Learn presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch the CDC NHSN Quick Learn. If you have additional questions about SAR reports or NHSN in general, the email address for the NHSN mailbox is nhsn at cdc.gov.